Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 10, Sequences of Rigid Motion. Remember, a sequence means something that is done repeatedly, two or more times, so two or more transformations. Rigid motion means the shape is going to move without changing its size or shape. So we're moving objects without changing them all we're changing is their locations and we're making more than one move so therefore it's a sequence of rigid motion so number one says in the following picture triangle abc can be traced onto a transparency and mapped onto triangle a prime b prime c prime which basic rigid motion or sequence of rigid motions would map one triangle onto the other okay so what I'm going to do here is copy the triangle they're talking about. Okay, so here we have triangle ABC is red. I copied it in red. And they're asking which transformation would get it onto the other triangle, A prime, B prime, C prime. So in other words, B has to land where B prime is. C has to end up where C prime did. And A has to end up where A prime does. Now, if I think about the transformations we've done, and I think that it is a translation along a vector, then I would have to move triangle A, the distance and the direction of this vector. And in doing so, I would move my triangle along this vector here. And when I do that, I would end up right here. Well, obviously it's not looking right. My A is upside down this angle here is upside down to this angle. So obviously it's not a translation. So there's one thing that we've ruled out by doing that. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is, well, maybe I rotate it. So if I rotate this upside down like so, and then move it so it's here, okay, now look at where A is. A is off a little bit. Let me get rid of this mark right here, okay. So A is not over here, it's over here, so we're off. So it was not a rotation. Okay. Whoops, let's just leave that alone, how's that? Okay, so now I'm going to try one other and it's a translation. So I'm going to flip it up down and there's my flip and then if I flipped it on this line right here, which this program does not allow me to do, if I did flip it on the line BC, then there is my triangle laying right on top of the other triangle. So then I would say it would be a reflection across BC. So this, this would be our reflection line, the side of the triangle BC. There would be a line right here and we reflect it over it. So it's a reflection across BC. Okay, I guess I don't have very good handwriting. They thought my C was a T. Okay, number two. In the following picture triangle, ABC can be traced onto a transparency and mapped onto triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. And they said B prime and C prime, or B and C, uh, B and B prime are in the same location. They're equal, meaning they do not move. So something's happening at this point. Well, it can't be a translation because there's no length. So A would never move. C would never move. So this obviously is a rotation and I'll show you that in a moment. Okay, so here I have traced triangle ABC. I am going to rotate it so that it looks like the sides are all parallel, but I remember I need to move B down to here. So I rotate it a little too much. So if I rotate it, to about there and put B back where it's supposed to be, you see that that is a rotation. And I'm gonna be specific with this. I'm going to say a rotation D degrees clockwise or CW for clockwise. This was rotated clockwise, okay. Number three, in the following picture, triangle ABC can be traced onto a transparency and mapped onto triangle A prime, 
B prime, C prime, where B prime is in the same location as B, which basic rigid motion or sequence of or, or, or sequence of rigid motions would map one triangle onto the other? Okay, so there's two answers to this, and I'll show you what's going to happen, or at least two. Okay, so in this one, there's actually a couple of things I can do. If I am going to do a sequence, let's focus on a sequence first, a sequence of rigid motion. That means do more than one thing. Well, I see that if I rotate this about B until C is right here, watch what's going to happen. So I'm going to rotate it. And if I rotate it around B, see what's happening is it's going to get closer and closer to and then C is going to end up right on top of itself. So that was one motion. So I'm going to write down what I did as I go. A rotation. And I'm just going to say D degrees clockwise, comma. I'm not there yet. But then if I flip it or reflect it across line segment BC prime, if I flip this up down and then move it so that this is landing right here, then now it is on top of the image A prime, B prime, C prime. So this one is a reflection about or across segment B, C prime. So that was the two rigid motions that got us our pre-image onto our image. Okay, but there is another way. So I'm just going to do a bunch of undos here if it lets me. Just quicker for me to do this and to rewrite everything. Okay, so now let's move on and let's try another way. Okay. If I draw a line. Now remember, whenever we reflect something, the image and the pre-image points are the same distance from the line of reflection. Or in other words, the line of reflection is the midpoint. So all I need to do is measure the distance from C prime to C. And I see that that is 20 seven millimeters. Half of 27 would give me the midpoint of that line. Half of 27 is 13.5. So it's approximately right here. So if I draw a line now through point B, through point B, and that point that is midway between C and C prime that I just drew right here. Let me put that right at zero so it rotates in the right place. So if you've been patient enough to watch these videos, you see how tedious this can be. So if I now line this up, and I draw a segment, let me change the color. And I draw a segment right here. And I reflect it across. This is the same distance from here to here as from here to here is. A directly to here is the same distance as here directly to A. So now if I reflect this across this line, then that would be a rigid motion and not a sequence. It would just be one reflection. And if I name this line L, then it would be a reflection across line L. So that would be two different ways to do that. Okay, number four. Move this aside. I don't know if I need it yet. It says, in the following picture, we have two pairs of triangles. In each pair, triangle ABC can be traced onto a transparency and mapped onto triangle ABC primes 
which basic rigid motion or sequence of rigid motions would map one triangle onto the other. Okay, so the easiest way to do this is I'm going to do a sequence. Okay, I'm going to do a sequence and I am going to first move one vertex to another vertex. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a translation from A to A prime using using a vector of that length. So I'm going to put my zero right at A prime. I'm going to rotate it up till I'm here. I'm going to draw a vector, the distance from A to A prime with an arrow telling me what direction I'm going to move this. Okay. So now I'm going to copy this so I can uh, so I can tell where it's going to move. So if I bring this down here and set it right here on top of that, right there, and I choose that and I choose this and I group them, and then I move this up the vector until A is at A prime, like so. So I've just done a translation, so I'm going to write that down. I did a translation of a, a prime direction and distance. So this is now my A prime end. So I moved from A to A prime. So this is my, remember the terminology, the beginning of a vector is called the initial end or point, and this is the terminal end or point. So I moved the initial to the terminal, and that is a translation from A to A prime. So now, I have this triangle sitting right on there. So really I could just move my vector. So I, this could be anywhere. I could have moved the vector over here after I drew that distance and then this would not be there because it's in my way now. Okay, so I'm going to delete this. Okay, so we have moved vector A. Where we have moved triangle A, B, C, the distance from A to A prime vector. Okay. So actually what I really should have here is an A here and an A prime here. Or I could have named it FG and have called this FG vector. So now my point is here and I'm going to rotate. So if I click on this and rotate it, but notice I can't rotate this. It's rotating from the center. But if I put that right on A and rotate it, then boom, we are right on our image. Okay, so then after this, it would be a rotation. D degrees, and I went clockwise. Okay, here's scenario two. This one's a little different. If I rotate this around, B would end up over here, B prime. If I rotate this around this way, C would end up here and A would end up up here and it's backwards. So there is a flip going on here. So let me trace it. Okay, so I have now traced it. So again, if I draw a vector with a straight line, and I like to work with things that have no distractions or obstructions, and I can draw a line through this from B prime to B or B to B prime without going through the triangle. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this little mark here. All right, so there's my vector. So rather than leaving it there this time, I'm going to move it over here. Vectors can be anywhere. They just tell us how far to move something. And I'm going to call this F and this G. So there's my vector. Okay, I'm going to copy it so when it moves, I can tell when to stop. Okay, and I'm going to place it right over top of my original vector, and it needs an arrow. Okay, and then I need to group those. Okay. And then I'm going to group that with 
my triangle. So now what we're really doing is just moving this vector. Oh, that didn't work. Okay, so I did some behind the scenes stuff here. Um, so now we are going, I just fixed these uh, vectors. So there are two sitting here and there is this triangle here. So if I move the initial end F to the terminal end G, if I grab the right one, okay still having difficulties here so if i choose this and i choose this and i group them there we go so now when i choose this if i move f if i move the triangle until f gets to g that is a translation of vector f g okay so there is my first step in my sequence but I am not done. So now I see that I need to get, this is now my C, I need to get it down here. So that's gonna involve a rotation, but B is in the place it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna rotate around this point right here. So I'm going to choose this triangle and I'm going to rotate it so that it's down here. Okay, there's my rotation. Now just disregard this here. Actually, I could ungroup those and get rid of it. To avoid confusion. So I moved it across, uh, or vector FG, I marked that there. And then I rotated, so I'm gonna say rotation of D degrees and this time I went clockwise, clockwise. And then finally, I'm going to reflect it across B prime, C prime. So now I'm going to flip this up down, but move it across here so it flipped across there. So finally, the last one is a reflection across B prime, C prime prime. So that was a translation from F to G, a rotation about B, I should say that to a rotation of D degrees around uh, B prime, and then a reflection across the segment B prime C prime. Okay. And here's number five, the two figures, ABC, and A prime, B prime, C prime. So this kind of looks like a baseball field in a way, not really. BA is longer than BC, I guess. Okay, so anyway, be given so that the length of curved segment AC equals the length of the curved segment A prime, C prime. Angle B is equal to angle B prime, which is are both 80 degrees. And the length of AB is going to equal the length of A prime, B prime, which is going to be the length of five. With clarity and precision, describe a sequence of rigid motions that would map figure A, B, C onto figure A prime, B prime, C prime. So try that, pause the video, see if you can do this on your own, and then come back and I'll explain how to do it. Okay, so I've started this for you. Um, I have, I have um, traced this shape. That looks like um, a triangle partially and then like a cone. So it almost looks like an ice cream cone, if you will. And then the tip of it, the bottom, the vertex of the tri of the angle B has to get over to the vertex B prime. Okay. So what I'm going to do is translate it, the distance of this vector here, but I don't want the vector right there because it's going to get in the way after a while. And I'm going to name that vector, we've been, uh, let's call it, uh, E, F. Let's go alphabetical order and A, B, and C are in our diagram. So if I now combine all these, okay, there's vector E, F. And if I copy it, okay, and move it right on top, this is just my reference. It should be just like using the plastic in class that we do, okay? If I sh now merge it with this, group it, now I can move this. So I'm going to move this shape 
the length of vector EF, the direction EF is going, and as you can see, it's going to land right on top of the B is going to be right on B prime. I went this distance, this direction. Okay, so there now E is where F was, F is now down here, and B is where B prime was. Or I'm sorry, B is now at B prime. Okay. So that was my first translation. So now that I've done that, let's ungroup these so I don't have to erase my vector. Okay, so now I've made them separate again. So now what am I going to do with this? Well, I want to rotate it about here. But before I do that, let's write down what we've done. So the first thing we did was translation E F vector that direction that distance comma now we're going to rotate so it's a rotation about a b o u t b prime d degrees and this time we're going counter clockwise we have to rotate the other way so now i'm going to rotate this cone counterclockwise until I'm parallel to my other one. And then of course B's got to stay right where it is. So it's right about there. That's pretty close right there. There's my rotation. Okay. But now what I want to do is move this point here over to here. So if I take my ruler, I don't need my ruler. This will be my line of reflection. So I'm going to now flip this Okay, but I'm not going to be able to do it with this program because I can only flip up, down, and left, right. Actually, if I flip it left, right, I guess that would work. But I have to rotate it so that this side is back like so. And what we really did was flipped it, but this program does not allow me to show it properly. What we did was flip it over a prime b prime okay so then after that i'm going to say reflect across segment across segment a prime b prime so we translated it vector ef we rotated about b prime d degrees counterclockwise and then we reflected it across a prime b prime so we translated rotated and reflected to get that shape onto its image. Okay, that is the end. Or is there anything else on this page? Let me look. No. That is the end of lesson 10. Go do your problem set.